Yeah, um, it was approximately about 200 of us, um, the way I understand it. And only about 10 of us were allowed to come to do this exercise, which where they paired the Air Force, Army, and now the Navy. And we're just super excited. We, we couldn't have asked for a more exciting experience. It's just been awesome. We, it's very, very rare um, that I get to train on planes and any of the guys, any of the people that I've been with, they are all sharing the same experience. We're blown away by the size of the planes, um, just how sophisticated they are. And it's just been a really intense experience um, just because yes, you have to be so, um, a, you have to pay so much attention to safety when the planes are, are, are going. It, it has all of us um, just really aware of what's going on and the, just the noise and the energy is just all the way. <laughs> it's just, it's just been an amazing experience basically. I don't know, it's, it's a very unique experience and all the guys that I've talked to that are doing the other exercises are extremely um, jealous that they didn't get to have this experience. Work, working with the different services, the Air Force and the Army has is, is been an amazing experience. Um, everybody has something different to bring to the table. Um, I have a lot of respect for the Army. Um, I, everybody that I've been around has had numerous deployments, so it seems like everything they're saying is coming directly from an experience a place of experience. Um, the Air Force, they have totally different technology and um, different, uh, they know about planes there. I mean, and, and just being here, I see how, um, I see um, how intense it is uh, working, um, working with aircrafts. Um, and I had no idea. I was always feeling like the most intense uh, part of the military was shooting guns and going to battle, but now I see that um, you know we're all one big huge force, and you can't have a you can't have a war without somebody to come pick you up on an airplane, and 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 everybody has just been extremely professional. Um, it's blowing my mind, and I'm I'm gonna take this experience with me, and it's just gonna make me a more professional person. I'm a hospital corpsman. Um, so this training exercise is, um, this compound is um, supposed to be um, a uh, in-between, between a huge scale hospital like Lundstall in Germany um, or, and getting patients off the battlefield. So we're kind of like a containment where you would bring somebody that's semi-stable and then from there, you'd put them on a plane um, and take them away. So as I was saying before, it's extremely important that we get an understanding of how to load them on a plane, but also um, we're doing training on inside these two tents on how to keep a patient stable until a plane is available to come and take them to a larger scale facility. We're doing vital signs on the patients, monitoring them, making sure that any kind of interventions that were done to keep them alive or keep them stable are continued. Uh, and that's about, that's about the extent of it. Um, this is one, one tent is more critical patients, um, but for the most part, if you were sent to a camp or, or um, facility such as this, you would be semi-stable on your way to another facility for further treatment. Within the AOT, you'll have uh, the, your, your, your director of operations, which that's my role here today. You'll have an OIC. Well, first of all, you'll start with the OIC of the AOT. Then you'll have the, the director of operations, which is what I do. And up under me, you have, you have your communications, your duty controllers, your aeromedical evacuation operation, operations officers, your AEOs, and then you'll have your SARM, your admin, and your logistics personnel. Of course, with your, you'll have a superintendent, and you'll also have uh, your chief nurse, and she's responsible for like your, your, your aeromedical evacuation crews, your flight crews. So if the AOT wasn't here, we wouldn't be able to to schedule these patients and get them to basically we're like we're kind of like an air traffic controller type deal where we're going to coordinate you know when the patients come in and then how we're going to get them to that next level of care and we also have our crews that has our flight nurses and our med techs and they'll actually provide that care for the patients until we get them to the next level of care. Our, our, our mission here is our job is when the patients come in 
they'll come in through the army side they'll come in through like the, through their mcd their minimum care detachment and then what we'll do is we'll we'll get those those list of names and then we'll coordinate and schedule a mission to get them out of here to the next level of care because we got some of the due to the severity of the injuries you have to take them to a hospital which would be ramstein germany or lawn stool global medic or war x 2013 was great training for uh, people that are about to deploy because it gives you so much it's so real the training here is just so realistic and everything that, that goes on with the patient care the patient movement and there's just no other training like it anywhere else i mean to come out here for 15 days and and all the rules, regulations, instructions, Air Force instructions, everything like that you have to follow when you deploy, those same principles apply here. So you're just kind of getting your mind set for when you deploy. There's no other training out there like it.